and I would like to welcome Jaka Chibe from University of Ljubljana to present his work also on uh, automatic extraction of morphological information. Okay, can you hear me like this, Ms. Lishita? Yeah? Um, okay, thank you very much. Um, I am presenting uh, an experiment that was um, done quite a while ago, um, before um, the pandemic in the good old times. Uh, and this is just an extra step um, that I uh, did for this conference. So it's uh, an attempt to automatically extract uh, what I call archetypal word formation trees for uh, Slovene. And these are just the first steps. So uh, let me start with the motivation. Uh, this um, is Slolex, uh, which has already been mentioned quite a few times today. This is the morphological lexicon of Slovene. I added a screenshot here. It's available online and you can uh, Look for it if you're interested. It's the largest uh, open source uh, database of Slovene words that contains uh, mm, different uh, inflected forms, uh, accentuated forms, and also uh, phonetic uh, transcriptions uh, in uh, the international phonetic alphabet and uh, its equivalent Sampa. Um, and it's also part of the uh, digital dictionary database of Slovene. It's basically the morphological um, morphological base of, of the digital dictionary database of Slovene, which also consists of other resources like the thesaurus of modern Slovene, the collocations dictionary, and so on. And uh, there is also uh, a version 3.0 that's already available, which is not the same as the one shown uh, in, in the online interface. We haven't updated that one yet. So the, the newest version actually contains about 365,000 uh, lexemes and all their inflected forms, as I mentioned. And it also includes uh, what we call word relations. So these are basically links between uh, mostly morphologically related uh, candidates, but also between, for example, abbreviations like Guspodichna uh, and their um, full forms. And uh, just to show you what this looks like, uh, so if we have, for instance, the verb aktivirati, uh, there are also some linked um, entries uh, that are related to the, the base entry uh, in a morphological way, usually through word formation. So we have, uh, for instance, adjectives like aktiviran or neaktiviran or, ge or the gerund aktivirania. But currently, so both in versions 2.0 and 3.0, uh, Slolix only contains a very limited number of uh, these reciprocal links. For instance, the links between nouns and their possessive adjectives or verbs and gerunds or adjectives and uh, nouns ending with uh, ost, like zariaveu, zariavelost. Um, and the relation type is not specified. So there are just these links. There's no specification what type of relation this is, what type of derivation. And the list is, of course, not exhaustive. This was made manually many, many years ago. Uh, and um, I also have to mention that we also update uh, Slolex um, with new words we find in, in Corpora. Uh, so it has some missing relations, for instance, for the new uh, lexemes that we add. And uh, as you can imagine, uh, adding these relations uh, manually um, is very, very time consuming and um, basically unfeasible. So uh, in this uh, NSSSS uh, project, which is the new grammar of uh, modern standard Slovene uh, resources and, and methods, um, we decided we would like to develop a system that would allow for the automatic extraction of these word relations between words and uh, we primarily had two goals. The first one was to uh, get a set of word relations to enrich the lexicon with, and the second goal was to um, basically formalize word formation data for Slovene in a machine-readable format. This was the first step, and this was done before the project uh, of uh, Dr. Kern and, and his colleagues. Um, so we were basically pioneering uh, the machine-readable uh, data for uh, Slovene word formation. Um, 
and uh, the benefits, of course, are that you can use this data for uh, digital language resources like dictionaries, or you can use them to expand the lexicon with new entries from, uh, from corpora, uh, or you can even use the rules that you generate uh, to generate word formation candidates, for instance, for terminology managers or writers. Um, and the method that we used is actually quite similar to the one uh, presented uh, by uh, Tomasz Ryavec before, uh, but we didn't uh, induce rules from, from a previous dictionary. We, uh, we designed the rules bottom-up using uh, uh, reference sources like the Slovene grammar. Uh, however, we decided to take a, a slightly different approach um, and split um, these rules based on word parts. And, uh, you probably noticed that I'm not uh, using uh, terminology like morphemes or suffixes because uh, our way of splitting words doesn't necessarily correspond to the, um, to the classical traditional way of um, splitting words into morphemes. However, this I have to stress this out. This is not really uh, something that we would like to um, use to overthrow the current uh, theory. It's just a pragmatical approach uh, and a different, um, a different way of visualizing the, the surface level rules for uh, the extraction system. Um, whereas the, the actual morphemes and uh, suffixes remain the same. Uh, we also added some uh, implicit word parts, uh, for instance, like the yeo uh, word part, which was implied in eo. Um, in, in the Slovene grammar. And uh, we designed a set of approximately 600 rules for the first version. And uh, as you can see here in this table, this is what they look like. They all have an identification code uh, from the rule hierarchy. Um, this is the actual rule. So you take a noun and you get a noun ending with ets. Um, and uh, these are the uh, part of speech or the lexical features of the original word and the related word in the Multext East system that uh, Tomasz also mentioned uh, before. And here's an example. Uh, so we use these rules to uh, extract pairs of morphologically related words from uh, Slolex. Um, and the results showed that our extraction accuracy on average was about 75 to 80 percent, uh, depending on the predictability and the productivity of the rule. Uh, and we extracted more than 66,000 potentially morphologically related pairs from Slolex. Uh, those are available as an open source data set um, at the Cloud NC repository. And you can read more about the, um, the process and the evaluation uh, in a paper of mine. It's in Slovene. Uh, so um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing uh, depends on the person, I guess. Um, and of course, uh, not all the extracted candidates are okay. Uh, for instance, because the system is very, very robust and very agnostic, you get things like dobiti dobava, uh, which is okay, but then you also get kriti krava and liti lava, which is not okay. Um, or for instance, if you have uh, the link between shokirati and shokantan, then you also get the link between pikirati and pikantan. Uh, so these need to be uh, manually validated. However, uh, for this next step, um, I decided to join these pairs uh, extracted uh, from Slolex into trees. Uh, so this is a table showing all the pairs extracted from the verb uh, abonirati. Uh, so you have these pairs of uh, candidates uh, like abonirano, abonirani, abonent, abonenski, abonent, abonentka, and so forth. Um, they all have their uh, IDs and the rules um, and the central part um, of the word. And uh, these were then joined into trees and visualized. And this is just a static image. So now I will try to show you the slightly more interactive version. Um, so let me just make this slightly bigger. So this is the visualization of the extracted tree. We start with the central part, uh, abon, and then abonirati. Uh, so the blue nodes are verbs, the green nodes are nouns, and the orange nodes are um, 
adjectives. Uh, so for uh, adverbs, we have red nodes, but there are no adverbs in this tree. So um, whereas the uh, gray rectangles uh, represent the rules used to move between, um, between different words. So you start with Abu Nirati, and then you use this rule to get to Abu Ma, um, and use this rule to get to Abu Maiski, and so on. Uh, we can also visualize this in a hierarchical uh, manner, which is maybe uh, more interesting for you, um, because then you get, thank you, then you get the, uh, all the uh, different stages of word formation uh, visualized like this. Um, and the next step was to, um, to take these 66,000 morphological pairs, uh, join them into trees. So we got approximately 15,000 trees uh, extracted, and some of them share the same uh, structure. So for instance, if we take the trees for activism, publicism, Marxism, and so on, uh, we get 49 trees, but they all form one single archetypal tree. Uh, so if I, if I go here, for instance, it looks like this. You get from activism to activist, activist to uh, activisto, activistic and activistka, and activistichno. And then if you uh, generalize these trees, uh, you get something with, uh, that I, I call ar an ar archetypal word formation tree which is basically a plan how to uh, construct a tree in, in Slovene. Um, and it looks like this. You start with some central part, you get to a verb, to an adjective, to a masculine noun, and so on. And you get a, a pattern um, that you can use. So out of these 15,000 trees, we get approximately 5,000 uh, archetypal word formation trees, and browsing through these trees can uh, yield words that are formed with different stages and chains of rules uh, that allow you to extract similarly formed words. For instance, if you uh, follow this chain, you get abonensky, absolvensky, assistensky, dirigensky, producensky, or braucho, drovaucho, vladaucho, and so on. Uh, so just to conclude, um, this was just the first step. Uh, more rules are required because not all of them were included in the first version. Um, and uh, the existing rules need to be further evaluated. For instance, we included no uh, rules for proper nouns in the first version. Um, and currently only subtrees are extracted in some cases. So we don't extract all the trees. We need to link them further to get the full trees. Uh, and the extracted word relations still need to be validated. Uh, and of course, uh, the current trees that were extracted only reflect what is the context, uh, content of Slolex. So we need to update Slolex to get the um, more precise uh, versions of trees. But then once we have the validated word formation trees, uh, the plan is to use them either to automatically generate uh, word formation candidates or to perform a sort of concurrent extraction of morphologically related words and their links uh, directly from corpora uh, to update Slolex. And I think I can conclude. Thank you. Well. <clears throat> So, questions from the public? Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, well, the, <clears throat> you mentioned that the extraction accuracy is, is, I think it's quite high. It's like between 75% and 80%. Uh, so, on what material was this per uh, percentage based on? Because, you know, um, for example, the derivation of the verb uh, ending in irati, it's quite predictable and it's not very complicated. Did you also try some more challenging examples? Yes, uh, so the evaluation was based on a sample uh, that was stratified by rules. So for each rule, we took approximately 10 to 20 candidates and evaluated the rule. Uh, so this 75 to 80 is the average for all rules. So for some rules, we had an actu accuracy of 5%, for instance, uh, whereas for other rules, we had 100%. So there are some rules that are very, very predictable, but some of them are very, very difficult to predict. So, yeah. 
Any other question? Yeah, please. Yeah, thank you. Would your approach benefit from identified pairs, hierarchical pairs of word formation that are not chained together, but a chain can be derived, I think. However, we, we currently have pairs identified um, with clarity. The rest is a bit more guesswork. Uh, so to construct new rules or to confirm the rules, yes, definitely. I mean, uh, any sort of data set that has been manually evaluated is valuable, yes. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs>